Have you ever wondered how you can rot your teeth out with a single loaf of bread? If so, I got exactly what you need. Today we're going to be making Sukerbrood, which is a Dutch bread, which literally means sugar bread. It's fantastic, it's sweet, and you'll rot your teeth out for sure. Traditionally, it's given to a mother as a birthing present. It has a ton of flavors of cinnamon and ginger, and there are these little sugar pearls that caramelize, and it's just out of this world. All right, so let's make it then. All right, to get this thing started, we need to first proof our yeast. We can combine three quarter cup plus two tablespoons, or 215 grams of whole milk, and we can heat that up to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit, or 45 degrees Celsius. Then we can toss in two teaspoons or nine grams of active dry yeast. Mix that together and let it proof for about 10 minutes at room temperature. While our yeast is proofing, we can get out our big old stand mixer, plop it on our table and plug it in, add our handy dandy dough hook attachment, and get our stand mixer bowl in place. Now we can add two and a half cups or 325 grams of bread flour. Start your mixer on low. And to that we can add one teaspoon or six grams of kosher salt, one tablespoon or 13 grams of sugar, two tablespoons or 28 grams of melted butter, and one large egg. After the 10 minutes are up, it's time to add our milky yeasty goo. Slowly pour it in, and scrape down the sides of the bowl with a spatula if needed, just to make sure everything is incorporated. Once everything is incorporated and there's nothing on the bottom of the stand mixer bowl, continue mixing at low to medium low speed for about 5 minutes until smooth. Now go ahead and turn off your stand mixer, remove all of your dough from the dough hook, set your stand mixer aside, Remove all of your dough from the bowl and set it on an unfloured, smooth work surface. Begin to knead by hand about 1-2 to two minutes. To do so, all you need to do is fold it in half, press it in with the palm of your hand, and do a quarter turn, and just repeat over and over. Once the dough begins to get very smooth, shape it into a ball. Set aside your dough and grease a large bowl with neutral flavored cooking oil, I used canola spray. And then place your dough in the bowl and cover with a warm, damp towel. And we will just let that sit at room temperature for about one hour. When you have about five minutes left in your hour long rest period, go ahead and get a medium sized bowl. And we're going to be using something special today called Belgian Pearl Sugar. This is a highly compacted form of sugar, and this is going to allow you to have some little crunchies in your bread. I've tried making this at home before, but it didn't work out. I couldn't compact it as much as I wanted to, and it would melt in the dough rather than caramelize or stay together. So I highly recommend splurging a little bit and buying the pearl sugar. You can find it on Amazon. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and mix in one cup of pearl sugar, or about 160 grams. 1 teaspoon or 3 grams of ground ginger, 1 teaspoon or 3 grams of cinnamon, and 1 tablespoon or 14 grams of melted butter. Make sure that your melted butter is not too hot and you don't want to melt the sugar. Go ahead and mix that by hand, just swirl it around till everything is all nicely coated, and then we can set the bowl aside for now. By now the hour should be up, your dough should be looking plump and doubled. Go ahead and lightly punch it down a little bit, just to get all that gas out. Lightly flour your work surface. And dump your dough down on your work surface. Add a little bit of flour to your rolling pin and to the top of your dough. And just flatten it out until it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Then we can take our pearl sugar from earlier, dump it on your dough and make an even layer all over the dough. Make sure to press most of it into the dough as much as you can. And once that's done, we're going to fold our dough in thirds lengthwise, flatten it down a little bit, and fold it in thirds the other way. Gently press it down again, and now we're going to knead it just a little bit just to make sure all of our pearl sugar is incorporated throughout the dough. 
after it looks mixed evenly and you can see little bits of pearl sugar coming out through the dough, go ahead and shape it back into a ball and put it in your bowl and cover it once again. Let that sit for about 20 minutes. And once again, while we're playing the waiting game, we can do some prep work. Go ahead and crack one single egg into a small bowl and add a small splash of water, about one teaspoon, and whisk it together with a fork and we have an egg wash. And then just set that aside for now. Then we can grab a loaf pan and about a tablespoon of softened butter. Fully coat the loaf pan with the softened butter. And then set the loaf pan aside for now. After our 20 minutes are up, we can grab our dough. And you may notice it's a little bit bigger and it's going to be a lot more malleable. Go ahead and lightly flour your work surface. Dump your dough ball down on your counter. Sprinkle a little more flour on top, cover your rolling pin with flour, and then we can shape our dough and elongate it. You'll want to make sure that the width of your dough is the same size as your loaf pan. Continue to roll it out as much as you can lengthwise. If it's not really rolling out well, you may need to cover it with a damp towel for a few more minutes, about 10 minutes, and just let it rest for a little bit longer, and then you can come back to it. Now we can come back after the 10 minutes are up, and just roll it out a little bit further as much as we can. We just want it long enough to be able to roll properly into a nice spiral. Once you get it as long as you can, brush some of your egg wash all over the top of the dough. This is going to help a lot with making sure your spiral does not come undone. Then we can add a heavy dusting of cinnamon and a heavy dusting of ginger. And then finally sprinkle the dough with some flour power as well. This is going to work in conjunction with the egg wash and prevent the spiral from coming undone. Now that our dough is filled with delicious components, we're going to roll it. You want to roll it pretty tightly, not too tight, not too gentle, just right. Pat the sides down so it fits in your loaf pin and plop it in. And then with a damp towel, we can cover our dough once more in the loaf pin and just let it sit at room temperature for one more hour. Now we're going to make a delicious drizzle for our bread. Set one of your burners to medium heat and get a medium saucepan. To that, we're going to add 2 tablespoons or 30 grams of water, 1 half cup or 100 grams of sugar, half a teaspoon or 1.5 grams of ground ginger, 1 half teaspoon or 1.5 grams of cinnamon, and one quarter cup or 82 grams of corn syrup. Light corn syrup works just fine here. Whisk it all together and bring it up to a boil. Let it simmer about two to three minutes. Then take it off the heat and whisk in one quarter cup or 59 grams of heavy cream. And then we can set that aside and let it cool and thicken. At last, the time has finally come. Our doughboy should be nice and puffy and beautiful. Just look at that. And now we're just going to add a few finishing touches just to make it extra special. We're going to take our egg wash from earlier and give it a pretty heavy brushing of it. Get it in all the nooks and crannies to make sure no spot is uncovered. Grab a handful of your fancy pearl sugar and sprinkle it in and lightly press it in on top. In retrospective, I wish I didn't put too much pearl sugar on the sides because some of it fell off during baking and it kind of fell on the oven floor and started to burn a little bit. So if you're going to put a lot, just make sure to firmly press it in a little bit more than I did. Now we can put it in our preheated oven that's set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. And then let that bake for 50 minutes or until the inside has an internal temperature of 200 degrees. When the time comes, take it out of your oven. You can notice uh, all the smoke coming out from the burnt pearl sugar. Carefully take your loaf out of the pan and set it on a wire rack to cool. And let that sit for at least 30 minutes before you cut into it. After very patiently waiting for 30 minutes and twiddling your thumbs, it's finally time to break into this bread. But wait, right before that, we need to drizzle our bread with our delicious syrup that we made from earlier. Go ahead and drizzle a very light coat on the top of your bread. Make sure to save some for later. You'll definitely want to keep a little bit just to drizzle your slices. 
Now let's take a look at our final product in all of its glory. So we did it. We made Dutch sugar bread or super brood. It's an incredible bread, uh, very sweet, delicious, definitely something you should be making and it's, it's not too hard. So if you learned something, enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and feel free to comment and I'll try to respond. Thanks so much.